When we have a little bit of material in your pan, we want to make sure that we know exactly where our gold is. We want it down in the deepest part against that middle right there. We want it all to go there. And the only way to get that gold there is to make sure your water is behaving properly. You don't want to wiggle it like this because what's going to happen with wiggling it, I'm stronger this way than I am this way. All right, so you can either take your, your both hands on both sides of the pan and center it like that. See how the water is doing exactly the same thing on both sides? So that means the gold is in the middle. Now, if, if you're not a two-handed person, then you can do it with one hand and use just the pivot of your elbow. Lock your wrist and get that same action going just with your using your elbow, not doing the wrist. Now that we've got our water completely centered, our gold is completely centered. Now what we're going to do is the, what they call a backwash. And we're going to take and have all of our material in the back and we're going to wash off of it. You see how that works? It's just barely coming off. And then you just keep an eye on it. Everything in your pan is the same size. So if everything in your pan is the same size and you've got gold in there, the golden rule, if everything in your pan is the same size, gold rules, well, there's no gold in there. <laughs> so let's get, we'll get this transferred into the pan and we'll get the rest of that plus eight material and we'll do exactly the same thing. We're going to get into the fun stuff now. We're going to get into the eight to 16 size. I know there's some pretty good gold in that size because when I was sampling out at the river, I saw a lot of that stuff. We're going to take just enough, just enough to mess with. We don't care about having all of it in there at once. We just want just enough to mess with. We're going to take and center our gold. And then we're going to be doing that panning action, the, the backwash. And you keep an eye out to see if there's any gold showing up. Well, gold is where you found it. We didn't find it here. <laughs> All right. Didn't find it there. Maybe it's in the bottom of this one because gold goes deep, right? Let's hope. Let's put a little more in there. We're going to center our gold again. And then we're going to do the, do the wash. You see how the water just kind of goes up the sides? That's what we're looking for. Just a couple of taps in there. Oh, we got some gold this time. Look at that pretty stuff in there. So we got a couple of nice pieces there, and like three nice pieces there, and a floaty here. That's not gold. So we're going to go ahead and get that material, that gold taken out of there, get it transferred into the snuffer bottle, and get, get down a little bit farther into the rest of this. I'll bet you there's more material into, in the, into the remainder of that material than there was at the top of that. So this is going to be our final, our final count of the, of the 8 to 16. Back and forth. And then we'll wash. Now there's a lot of people that when, when you watch them pan, and you may do it yourself, you tap the pan. There's a couple of different reasons for tapping the pan. One of them is just a slight bump to help liquefy things. So just a slight bump just to liquefy things and it will allow that material to process faster. Okay, that's just a slight bump. The other thing that will happen is if you're wanting, let's say that you've got a piece of gold off in the middle someplace. You got a piece of gold out there. You see them? And I want that gold to go back up on the edge. If I start tapping, 
Look what happens to that piece of gold. Okay, that piece of gold just crawled right up on the edge. If you tap correctly, the tap is going to create the direction for your gold to go. If you tap incorrectly, the gold is not going to know what to do, and it's going to seem like the tap is very ineffective. Let me show you exactly how the tap works best. If you notice the side of the pan, you see the angle of that pan? That's the direction that you want to tap, okay? You want to tap straight down that direction. You don't want to tap on the side, and you don't want to tap on the top. You want to tap down the, the direction of the pan, because what that's going to do is going to create a jumping motion. A jumping motion that your gold, since it's so heavy, it's going to be the first back down to the bottom. There's enough grit at the bottom of the pan, and when all that grit is there, that gold's going to capture that grit and go, go up toward the tap on the rebound. Everything else is trying to settle. So when you're, when you're tapping this, you kind of hold it as high up as you can and then tap. All right? So that's, that's what it's going to take to get that gold to stay up at the top of the pan. Now, the other thing that, that you can do, let me see, we'll get, uh, I'll show you what, the, what gold we're playing with here. See that nice stuff in there? Got some pretty gold right there. Pretty stuff. All right, now watch. I'm going to take and just spread this out a little bit, and I want, I want you to see how the, uh, the gold will react to the tap. Okay, you see all that gold up there? Just like that, that gold went up against the edge. And now we can just take, now we can take the snuffer bottle and suck it up. Just like that, it's gone. All right, we'll go through this one more time. And that's, that's one of the important things about not having in so much in here that you're having to transfer material out. I haven't taken any material out of this. So if there was gold in there, it's still in there. It's not in my catch pan, my safety pan. So I'm going to go through this again. I got everything down there centered. Do a backwash. And we'll see if we got any gold left in there. Some of my materials a little bit locked up. I'm just going to tap a little bit, just a small tap, just enough to create a vibration. Not enough to move gold or anything, just enough to make vibration. And we didn't miss any gold. Everything, everything in, there, in there now is nice and clean. There's no more gold left in there. So that was our gold from our 8 to 16. Let's look at what we got out of that 8 to 16 in the 8 to 16 tray. Let's take a look at the gold that was in there. I got a couple, couple of floaties. Let's start over. We're going to pull the bottle off, pull the cap off the bottle. I'm going to hold your finger over top of the, of the port, turn it upside down so all of our gold is down by your finger. We're going to take and make like a little tornado in there and just let it pour over your finger. And there's our gold. Okay, so that's a, a better look at the gold. So that's 8 to 16. All right, we're going to go ahead and put that back in the uh, snuffer bottle. Gold just crawls to the edge. Let me tell you another thing about this particular pan that I've chosen. This pan right here is 
a pan that I use because green works good with my eyes. Some people like terracotta, some people like black. Black is good to see the gold, but it's hard to see the black sand, all right? So I like the dark green. The other thing I like about this, this pan is actually the drop bottom. You see this part that I'm holding on to? It's about a quarter of an inch of, of drop straight down. That's what happens on the inside. We have that quarter inch drop straight down. When I'm tapping the side of this, gold can come across and start climbing the side. But with that drop bottom, the gold hits it and it's like, bam, it's like, like smacking it up against the wall. It's just gonna stay there. So we don't lose track of our gold. When you get down below 250 mesh into the non-visible range, you have to know where your gold is and you have to trust that it's there. And the better your equipment, the more retention you're gonna have of that even finer gold. If you have just way too much material, let me show you a couple of techniques if you just dump the whole thing in there, all right? So we've got the whole thing in there and there's not enough room to actually do the backwash and tap. There's just not enough room. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna try to minimize this material. Remember what we were talking about, the side to side motion? Okay, some people do this, you know, kind of shake it up in a big circle. Well, you don't know where your gold is. See, just to prove a point, if I'm gonna be washing this stuff out, look at that gold that's all the way up here. See that gold right there? There's a piece there, piece there. You see that gold? That stuff is supposed to be underneath there. If you've got your material going round and round and shaking in circles and stuff, you may be settling your gold, but you're not putting it where you know where it is. If you know where your gold is, you'll never lose it. So we have to get it down in the bottom corner buried. You should never see your gold until you're ready to do it, the final backwash. All right, so we've got all that in there. I'm gonna take everything from side to side and then start tipping forward. So I'm, I'm flat and I'm gonna start tipping forward, keeping that side to side motion going. Side to side, start tipping forward. And now you're gonna see where that material just gets to the end. I'm gonna stop right there. I gotta let this material lock up, all right? It can't be all fluidy, it needs to lock up. And you can see there's no gold up here anymore because now my gold is buried deep and protected. Now we're just gonna wash off the top stuff. When we wash off the top stuff, we almost have to stand the pan straight up. And we can just, just go into the water and let the top wash off. You see how that is just washing off like that? You can do that a couple of times. Bring it back down again, side to side. Start tipping forward. See, we're still not seeing any gold. Just wash off a couple of times. Now I'm down to not very much material. Now I'm gonna take a look at where my gold is. Now this is just called fanning the gold. Watch what happens here when I fan this out. We haven't seen any gold yet, right? How about that? Just like that, we, I knew, even though we hadn't seen any gold at all before, I knew that if it was in there, that fanning back like that's gonna show me exactly where the gold is. We're gonna take all of our material and get it centered in the back here. Now, if all we do is the wash, see that black sand, it just kinda of like hangs there. But what will happen is if you add the tap at the same time, it will loosen all of that black sand up. So I'm gonna hold it close to the top and get my wave going and then I'm gonna take and tap here, all right? So when I w get that tap going, look what happens. My gold is going to the tap and my black sand is washing away from it. So just like that, I've got all of that black sand off my gold. Get a couple more washes there, a couple more taps. Just like that, we've got clean gold. Isn't that cool? I got a couple of little black sand pieces in there. There we go, we got them washed away. But that's all it takes with getting the, the motion of the water and the percussion of the tap 
to get the gold moving the direction you want it to go and the black sand loosened up to be easily washed away from it.